um, ICAD. It's Index Card a Day. So it was started by this girl. She goes by the um, the name of Daisy Yellow, and but her real name is Tammy. And she's been doing it for I don't know how many years. And I just like making little pieces of art. I think it's something that I'm going to do, I know for sure, and I'm already getting started. Then there's also a June thing going on, um, ATC card a day. I think it's ATCAD, ATCAD. Anyway, um, anyway, so, and that one was started by Peg Robinson and Chelsea, who are kind of art peeps. So, index cards are just these, you know, little index cards. And I happen to keep these in my studio all the time, the unlined ones, because I just like to use them in things. And you've probably seen me jelly, jelly plate print with them. I put up that video last week with when I was doing the spray painting and I had some index cards in that. So I use them all the time. Now I particularly like the index cards because the paper is thin and for me if I'm working on thin paper well you know what that means it becomes a collage so anyway I've got my cards ready my blanks and the only difference with the ATC's is the size the index cards are three by five the ATC's are two and a half by three and a half but the point is making little pieces of art and the point is to establish a daily practice and I think that just nothing could be better for us than to do a daily practice. It helps heal us in so many ways, and I do, do love that. So, if you're watching me regularly and following me here on Facebook and on Instagram, you'll know a few weeks ago I did a bunch of really dribbly things and I posted them. They were kind of like this, but they were actually a lot bigger. They were pretty large. Well, I thought, I wonder if... I started the index cards like that. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe that would be a good way to start them and to um, instantly get a cool background. So I'm gonna show you how I did these and then it takes a little bit for them to dry. So I'm gonna come back and we'll embellish one of these. So I'm gonna set these aside for a moment and set the stencils aside for a moment. And I'm gonna put some plastic down this is just a plastic bag I have that I cut up, but um, I'm gonna use ink so it can be kind of messy and um, I like to have it on plastic so that I can pick it up and move it. You know what, I've got a tray here. I'm gonna put a tray underneath it so I can definitely move it. And I have selected, I have selected acrylic artist inks because they're super watery, but they're also acrylic, which you know they'll be permanent. You could do this with watercolor, you could water down some acrylics, you could just kind of do whatever you want. I mainly want to do something that's kind of runny and to get this sort of, this dripping kind of background. So that's my goal. I've got my iCat, my cards here, my blank index cards, and we'll just start with one of them. And when using inks and so forth, I really don't use too much. I just use some water. Sometimes I'll use a spray bottle. Um, this spray bottle, everybody's gonna ask about it. It's on my Amazon shop. It's the fantastic, fantastic spray bottle. But let's just shake one of these up and then I'll show you one way to get started and I'll show you a few ways we can do this. All right, so. Let's just hold it up. Somebody actually emailed me a couple weeks ago about drips and they said, your drips are so cool and I can't get my drips to do the same thing. And I thought, huh, that is so interesting because I don't really think of my drips as being extraordinary, but I let them do what they want to do. This is, I just put this in water, and so I'm gonna pull out a little bit of the ink here. You can do this or not. I should have had Nancy Curry come over and help me with this, because she's like the queen of ink, and um, that would have been fun. 
fun, fun. But anyway, you can do anything you want here. You could spritz. I've got my sprayer here. Let's spritz lightly. Oh, that was not lightly. That was a big old spritz. You can get something like that going in the center. You can get this moving around. My goal here is to get some movement from the ink, to get some marks, and to leave some white background. Those are my main goals here because this is just going to be my background, okay? So I was using a brush. Now you can also, you can tease it out with a skewer. I tend to only use one color when I put this down. The other thing I do though sometimes is I, um, this by the way, somebody commented on the color. This is that To Die For color by Dale Rowney, FW. Antelope is the name of it. And oh my gosh, I have just become totally smitten with this color. I love it so much. All right, the other thing I've done, which I just think it's kind of weird looking is I've taken this, um, these are the Tim Holtz, they're his metallics, the alcohol inks, and I like to just put like one drop in and then let it kind of expand out. Look at that. Oh my gosh, isn't that gratifying to see that on there? I mean, you can put another if you like, but it's just so pretty. And it dries down in its full metallic wonder. So I think that that's kind of pretty. Now this one I would set aside now because for me that's about where I want it to be. I don't need anything else on it for the moment. Let's try a different one. Okay, so let's say you've got ink in a container that it doesn't have the little um, squeezer. Just get one of these pipettes or... Um, you can get, oh, here's one. Here's a little ink dropper. You can get these also if you don't have a little squeezer. I kind of like just using the squeeze top or the pipette. drops of it up here. I just like that metallic peeking through. It's so amazing. And so you can do something just this simple and create a bunch of them, stick them in a pile when they dry down, and then you're kind of ready to roll, okay? As far as, um, you know, creating your iCADs when the day comes up. I'm going to add a slight bit of blue to this. So here are these, and I think they're good. I'm going to sit these aside. I'm going to take this tray and sit it on the floor because I'm finished using the inks right now. And then we're going to go back with a couple dry ones, and I'm going to show you how you can just easily, easily, quickly transform them with a stencil. Thanks for watching. Stencil Girl would love to spark even more of your creativity. With technique videos and more, just click on the links below and you're all ready to stencil.